Uh, we really embraced being a video game, and what and uh, that was one of the high-level directions that I gave the team was to design the levels in such a way without any constraints, worrying about immersion. Uh, or cinematic experience or logic and reason to be honest. When you say embrace being a video game, you basically mean throw logic and reason out the door, steer into and own the contrivances that you might find in more gamey experiences, not unlike a Nintendo game, let's say he used that reference, I'll use that. Uh, and, and by doing so, the reason, the reason why is we're able to make more engaging uh, level design, uh, level experiences for the player. It's all about engagement for us and so uh, if we don't have to worry about immersion and we really embrace what we are, and, and we already had one foot in that boat because we have glory kills where characters flash gold and then literally drops pop out of them when you kill them. So that's pretty video gamey. But then in some of the level design stuff, we were much more cinematic and immersive in 2016 where we didn't have to be. I think there was a disconnect there of like picking up guns from dead bodies like it's an immersive survival horror game. But then I'm literally chainsawing a guy and piles of gold ammo capsules are popping out of him. That doesn't really make sense. So uh, steering into and owning the contrivances you see in video games is very liberating uh, for our team, for myself, for everybody. And it means that we're able to in increase the scope and the engagement levels uh, that the player has while they're playing through our levels. That, that was critical in solving one of the biggest criticisms of Doom 2016, which was it was all combat combat arenas and hallways and and Doom 2016 was a one-trick pony and it didn't really have much else to offer besides skate parks and arena fights and that's true our combat was world-class but everything about else about the game wasn't necessarily up to the level of the combat so what we wanted to do is make sure that the moments that you have traversing through the level and solving the tra the level pu the the level design puzzles that w that we provide you with are just as engaging as the arena fights and this time around the arena fights are even better so every aspect of the game had to get better the level design had to get better and the way we did that was by owning the contrivances of being a video game Argent Tower is a good example though of that 2060 I mean that 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 changed the pace I mean <clears> that, <throat> like climbing up that tower it had a scope and scale that was that was different than the rest of the game and I think you know as he said the the scope that we were able to add to Eternal through some of those yeah. puzzles is, uh, I mean, people will feel it. It's, yeah. it's really Moving remarkable. through the levels this time, especially on Cultist Base, for example, with some of those traversal puzzles, is going to be just as engaging as the combat. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty confident in that. They're skill-based traversal puzzles, so it's something that you master over time. We have some straight puzzles, too, that aren't about uh, necessarily skill, but more about figuring them out. But majority of our puzzles are skill-based, and it, me it means that replayability on those is very high. Because it's kind of like a Tony Hawk game. What was hard the first time, you could kind of pull off some of these traversal puzzles really fast the second and third time.